Today we're going to learn about bond energies. To break bonds, energy must be added to the system, so they're endothermic. So what you're doing is you're putting energy in to pull atoms apart to break that bond. To form bonds, actually the opposite happens, energy is released. So that's exothermic and it has a negative sign. Bond enthalpy. The bond enthalpy is an energy change or the energy that's required to break a chemical bond. It's usually expressed in kilojoules per mole and the tables are done at 298K. The exact amount of bond energy depends on the chemical bond and the environment in which the bond exists. Therefore, when you look at the, the tables, the numbers you're going to see are just the average values. Although this is a formula we're going to use. Bond energy, delta H, is equal to the summation of all the bonds that are broken, and those are going to be reactants, minus the summation of all the bonds that are formed, and those are products. The delta H represents a bond energy per moles of bond, and it's always a positive sign. So this is a bond energies table that you should be using. This is the one from our textbook. And a couple things you might notice on this is notice that it takes more energy to break a multiple bonds. So for example, if you look at the triple carbon bond, it's 839 versus, versus a double carbon bond, which is 614, versus a single carbon bond, which is over here, which is 347. So we could say a double is stronger than a single and a triple stronger than a double. Let's keep going. So we're going to do three example problems. I'm going to flash another one up, and you can do that one at home. So for this one, find the delta H of the following reaction using bond energies. Well, the first thing you need to do is draw all the structures. So let's do that real quick. Hopefully you know there's two hydrogens, and hydrogen has just a single bond. And then hopefully you remember when we drew oxygen, oxygen has a double bond. It's going to look like that. And then remember water has a hydrogen, and it's attached to with an oxygen, and that's going to be a bent structure. And so you've got two OH bonds. And then you have, I'm not going to draw all the lone pairs. So for this, the bonds that we're breaking are the hydrogen, hydrogen bonds, and the oxygen, oxygen bonds, which are double. And the bonds that we're forming are the oxygen, hydrogen bonds, and water. So the formula looks like this. The bonds broken, we're breaking two hydrogen, hydrogen bonds. We're forming, and we're also breaking two oxygen, oxygen bonds. And then we're forming four hydrogen and oxygen bonds. So now what all need to do is plug in the numbers. So 2 times 432 plus 495, that's, notice that's a big value, that's a double bond for the oxygen, uh, minus the value for 4 times the value for the hydrogen and oxygen. And that should give you a negative 509 kilojoules per mole. Let's try another one. Use the bond energies to determine the enthalpy of this combustion. Now, for all these examples today, we're doing the delta H for the entire reaction. You actually could have one of these where you're solving for one of the substances, and what you simply do is put that in as an X. Uh, let's do this problem. So we're going to do products minus reactants. We're going to break, actually, three different types of bonds. We're going to break a carbon-hydrogen bond. We're going to break a carbon-carbon bond. And you're also going to break an oxygen-oxygen bond. And we're going to form two types of bonds. We'll form a double carbon-oxygen bond, two, uh, actually six of those. And we're also going to form eight oxygen-hydrogen bonds. So that, that's the way the setup's going to look for this. So we're going to say eight times the delta H for carbon-hydrogen plus three times, oops, that's a typo. I'm sorry, that should right there be a two. Let's change this because you're actually two carbon-carbon bonds. And hopefully that's what I put in the problem. Plus five times the value for the oxygen-oxygen and then six times the carbon oxygen, and then eight times the hydrogen oxygen. That's what I did here. Oh, yes, good. I switched that on the on this one. So you insert all the numbers. So it's eight times the 413, two times the 347, five times the 495. So all these are the bonds that are broken. So we're putting energy in. These are the bonds that are formed. This is an exothermic process. That's why these are negative. And when you do all the math, you get negative. 2,057 kilojoules per mole. This is another sample problem. I'm not going to go through this one, but you can do this one if you'd like to try it. And remember when you're doing these problems, the energy, the reactants, and the reactants are often compounds, and we're going to break those bonds, so that's endothermic, so we're putting energy in. Then we have high energy, uh, high energy atoms. Then when those atoms come together to form the products, that's an exothermic process. And the difference between those two is the delta H of the reaction. One final problem. Predict the delta H for the following reaction. Now, for this one, we have CH3N triple bonded to carbon forms CH3C triple bonded to nitrogen. And then we can look at the table 
We're given all this information about these different substances. But this one, there's actually a shortcut. Now, first, we want to draw these. So if you look at, we have a, a carbon bonded to three hydrogens. And then that is single bonded to a nitrogen. Then that nitrogen is triple bonded to a carbon. Now, the other structure is going to look similar to that. The only thing that's going to switch is the nitrogen-carbon bond. So it's going to be carbon, again, bonded to three hydrogens. And that carbon is single bonded to another carbon. And then that's triple bonded to a nitrogen. The thing to note here is if you could do bonds broken minus bonds formed, notice there are actually four different bonds that don't break. You don't ever break any of the carbon-hydrogen bonds. You don't ever break the carbon-nitrogen bond. The only bond that you break is a bond between this carbon and this nitrogen. And this bond between this and this bond that is formed is a bond between the carbon and the carbon. So when you look at this table, actually there's one more value not in this table. Really the only two values we need to use are these right here. You can include the carbon-nitrogen bond and the carbon-hydrogen bond, but they're going to cancel out. Because if you, if you say that you break those, you're going to have to form them again on the other side. So the easiest way to do this is just say the delta H is 305 minus 347, and so it's minus 42 kilojoules. That's it. So those are some bond enthalpy problems. Like I said, the only thing different we're going to do is you'll also have to solve the bond energy for maybe an unknown substance that you won't be given in the table, and you'll have the delta H for the reaction. That's it. Uh, we'll be doing some of these uh, tomorrow in class and finishing up our lab. Have a good day.